Hello, welcome back to Elden Ring. I hope you guys are enjoying our first days of this game finally being out. It's been an incredible journey for me so far, but there's some things I think you should know as a new player exploring the Limgrave region. You know, hidden items, important unlocks, things you do not want to miss, and more. So, welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Hollow, and these are five secrets of Limgrave. Starting with number one, a really, really important detail that I missed in my first uh, five hours, which would have been nice to have. Summoning. You see, it does not work how it worked in the network test. You can't casually buy the wolves from the merchant in the first church. However, it is pretty straightforward uh, when you know what to do. That church I mentioned is actually called the Church of Ella, and it's an important location for multiple reasons. Yes, you have your first merchant who sells the crafting kit, and yes, you have the anvil for upgrading, but also you have the summoning unlock. Once you've progressed far enough to have your horse, torrent by your side, you can at this point immediately return to the church to meet Renna. Renna is a mysterious witch character who is particularly kind to you if you answer her truthfully. She'll give you the summoning bell and even the wolves which we had to buy from the merchant here in the network test. Summons are pretty insane in Elden Ring, much better than we've ever had them in the previous games, so you definitely want to be using them. We can even upgrade them. So yeah, having them in boss fights or when you're facing a lot of enemies is pretty clutch. We're going to follow up with a video all about summons and finer details of it, as well as five awesome summons that you want to consider and where to get them soon. For now though, go unlock summoning because it's kind of important. Number two. Here's a personal one for me. Torches. Oh my god, the amount of players that just do not make use of them is insane. My whole world changed back in Bloodborne when I finally put one in my offhand and started slapping enemies who are weak to fire. It's super effective. They weigh very little and hey, they also work as a torch, you know, revealing a dark area that would otherwise be extremely hard to progress in, like a dark cave. But they're even better in Elden Ring. No longer are we doing a little lame swipe for some bursts of fire damage. Now we can do a sort of torch style ash of war. It has you breathing out fire like a flamethrower, casting it right and left for only a little MP. It works as a short range burst of fire which is solid, but it lights the floor on fire which will also burn enemies if they walk into it. So trust me on this, the amount of enemies that are weak to fire in souls generally, and of course Elden Ring, is staggering. So if you're no pyromancer, get yourself a torch. Plus, if there's any red barrels around, you can blow them up from safety using the fire breath, and that can catch out ambushes or clear a path. The steel wire torch can be found down south at Castle Morn. Simply head southeast from the first step to get the main road and cross the bridge that leads to this area. We then follow the main road all the way down to the castle, which is guarded by a giant archer. He's actually not that bad, you just aim for his glowing parts or just run past him and enter the castle. The torch is actually hidden away up top, so we head up there by progressing through the mound of bodies and up past these beastmen. Up to the right, we have an entrance that we'll quickly pass through. There's nothing really going on here. And then climb the ladder on the outside on the left. Don't worry about what these guys were doing to that poor soldier. Up top, there's a fight between the servants and the knights. We can just ignore this and head around to the left, which has an item on the ground. That is the torch. Awesome. All right, so here's a really cool one, although not vitally important mechanically, I admit. We can now alter the look of our outfits. So yeah, Fashion Souls has got better. The tailoring kit allows you to alter your equipment at the cost of some runes at any grace to change the whole look of that outfit. My Vagabond, right, in this example, no longer has the cape covering up. And now I can see his armor and the little satchels that he's carrying, a couple of weapons. I really like this look. And it's a tiny surprise mechanic that I really appreciate. Imagine actually the amount of armor sets and outfits in this game, in Souls games in general, that you can now change and alter and will have a more unique look for everyone. So to get your tailoring kit, you just need to go kill the demi-human chiefs, which by the way, is a great place to have a torch and maybe burn these guys. These guys are actually in a cave though, near the start of the game in Limgrave. If we start the first step grace uh, and head west towards the beach or the coastline and then follow that beach around to the north on your right will be a cave inside is a lot of these demi humans so you want to be careful but the boss fight itself is just a bunch of enemies at once and then two big boys so i recommend using the wolf summon who will take a lot of the attention off you and then you can focus the big enemies one at a time as a reward for killing this boss though you'll get the tailoring kit and needle and then from that point at any grace you can modify your outfits for number four we have to help about the guys who like dragon based magic and dragon transformation because it's very good in this game. If you want to become a dragon and you want to speed your way to that very early in the game, this is how. The island beyond the beach that we saw earlier is actually where you get the dragon covenant of this game. It's very early. But first, you're going to want the heart of a dragon. 
Fortunately, there is a friendly dragon called Aghil that's going to help us with that to the east of the first step. This lake is actually called Aghil's Lake, and you'll find all the people here chanting his name in worship. If you head to the northwest side of the lake towards the pile of people who are worshipping the dragon, Aghil will nicely show up right on cue and be a tiny bit mad with you. He's no joke, I'm not going to lie to you, but it's doable. My three strats are these. Mount up on torrent and run in after you bait out an attack, landing maybe two light hits or just one heavy hit with your melee weapon and repeat. The second strat is do the same thing but cast spells because magic's so strong and you can actually cast while mounted or you could use a bow if you're up for that. Third strat is to walk in there with huge ego and fight him one-on-one. -on -one. He's honestly got usual dragon mechanics, but even simpler, to be honest, because he's quite early in the game, I guess. Ultimately, I was able to get him down after a couple of goes and grab that heart of his. The dragon heart is a key item and can be offered in Dragon Communion. We need to eat it at the dragon altar, basically. The dragon altar ties back to the third point of this video in that cave with the demi-human chiefs. If you go back to that grace and then pass to the back of the room, it continues through this tunnel. That tunnel leads up and up and up, and it comes out on that island that we could see from the beach. Here, if we head up to the ruins, we also have a shrine, and that's where we can offer the heart to the statue for various options. To start, it's just these three, Dragonfire, Dragonclaw, and Dragon Maw. They require Faith and Arcane to use, but there are also Glintstone Dragons, so perhaps there'll be int-based spells later. All the same, right now, it is one heart per spell, but later in the game, you can have other chances to get more hearts. All right, finally, for number five, I'm being cheeky, and I'm giving you three and one. One for a strong staff for you spellcasters, one for a huge sword-loving strength build, and one for thrusting dex builds. First up, we have the Greatsword. You can get an insane Greatsword called the Grafted Blade Greatsword very early on. It does require 40 strength to use in one hand, but just 27 to use in two hand. The Ash of War gives you a buff which increases your health and stamina and poise during it, so it's very good. You just need to head down to Castle Morn like we did for the torch, but instead we need to drop down around the back. To do so, we head up to the courtyard as before, but this time run past the mound and then past the pumpkin head and around to the right. As we follow this around, we'll eventually come to a ladder that leads up, and up top we can run straight forward and eventually on our right, drop down. Here we'll find a grace. Now we just need to head down and down and down until we eventually see the boss area, which is a beach with jellyfish. Before you go down there, we can turn around to the left and activate the grace. But to get the great sword, we have to go over there and kill that boss. And the reward is actually the sword. I have a full video on the sword and a bunch of tips for colossal sword usage if you want to check that out. Second, then, is the staff for spellcasters. This one's straightforward. If we start the grace that we unlocked on the way to Morn Castle, this is the Bridge of Sacrifice Grace. It's a wonderful name. And then head west along the cliff edge, we'll come to the Demi Human Forest Ruins. There is a pack of Demi Humans here and a big boy spellcaster. So take your time and work down the group, killing the small enemies until you eventually are one on one with the big guy. This enemy will drop the Demi-Human Queen Staff, which has great base stats, but very quickly scales to a B rating, so this is going to be an incredible option for the opening of the game. We also have a video on sorcery and how to get your build going very effectively in the early game, if you want to check that out. But lastly, for the dex users, we have a cool as hell rapier that literally is plus 8 upgraded when you get it. This has the biggest requirement of the three, though, because it requires you to have reached the Stormvale Castle, which is part of the main story. That is very early on, though. In Stormvale Castle, the route that you must take to progress and get to the boss will also have you standing on this chapel. If we drop down into it, we meet this fine fellow with a lovely hat. Rogia is a sorcerer who asks you to defeat the main boss of this area. After you kill that boss, which I'm not going to show for spoilers right now, you would head back to the round table to go speak to him. He's on the balcony. You find him waiting for you to reward you with his own sword, which is a bit bittersweet because he's dying and that's why he wants you to have it. This sea scaling rapier not only looks cool as hell, but again, starts at a plus eight and even has the glint blade phalanx ash of war, which is a very solid ash of war to have. So there you go. Three weapons, the three builds very early on. But that is it. Those are my five secrets or more really of Limgrave to use in your early gameplay of Elden Ring. I hope this helped you in some way, whatever build you end up going. And if this video was useful, please drop a like so I can make more videos like this one. One. And if you have any more tips yourself, drop it in the comments. Until next time, then I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is uh, goodbye.